In today's video, we will travel 30 years ago to find out the story of Huawei, one of the global technology leaders. It all started in a small apartment in Xinjiang in 1987. Ren Xingfei, 44, a former deputy director of the People's Liberation Army's Engineering Corps, founded Huawei. At a time when all of China's telecommunications infrastructure was imported from abroad, Ren wanted to set up a Chinese domestic telecommunications company. So, in the beginning, the main object of activity was the resale of private branch exchange PBX switches imported from Hong Kong. Soon, around the 1990s, the company had its own research and development center already employing about 600 employees who began their own development and marketing of PBX switches. Subsequently, Huawei stood out through various major projects, the main launch point of the company on the market being the realization of the most powerful switch in China, the C and C08 digital phone switch. Huawei also won a major contract to build the first national telecommunications network for the People's Liberation Army. In 1996, the Beijing government adopted a policy that supported domestic telecommunications manufacturers, with Huawei being promoted as a national champion, leading to the establishment of new research and development centers. For 10 years, Huawei operated only in China, and since 1997, the company has begun to expand. They won the first international contract for the manufacture of networking equipment for Hutchinson Wampoa, a Hong Kong company. Subsequently, Huawei began producing products based on the GSM, CDMA, and UMTS standards. This was followed by a period of many new contracts on international markets, one of which was concluded with IBM for a period of five years, 1999 to 2003. In July 2003, Huawei set up its phone department, and by 2004, Huawei had delivered their first phone, the C300. As expected, over time, Huawei products have evolved, moving from terminals with physical keyboards to touchscreen models and even smartwatches in 2014. In 2004, Huawei won a new contract to produce a next-generation network for Dutch operator Telfort, worth more than $25 million. In 2005, Huawei signed a global framework agreement with Vodafone. This was quite important as it was the first time that a Chinese telecommunications equipment supplier received the status approved by Vodafone Global Supply Chain. This was followed by several contracts and partnerships with various companies such as security software vendor Symantec Corporation, Australian carrier Optus, Bell Mobility and TELUS Mobility, Nokia Siemens Networks, and others. In 2010, Huawei was first included in the 2010 Global Fortune 500 list published by the American magazine Fortune, based on annual sales of $21.8 billion and a net profit of $2.67 billion. Another big step taken by Huawei was the announcement of enterprise activity in 2011. In order to provide network infrastructure, fixed and wireless communications, data center, and cloud computing for global telecommunications customers. The following year, Huawei Technologies was the world's largest telecommunications equipment maker and China's largest telephone network equipment maker. It is also the king of 5G development because it holds the largest number of 5G patents, the largest number of 5G commercial contracts, and the most complex 5G portfolio. In addition to all of Huawei's performance, they have faced various criticisms of its operations, the best known being U.S. accusations of Huawei's espionage products. Moreover, in 2018, the National Defense Authorization Law for fiscal year 2019 contained a provision prohibiting the use of Huawei equipment by the U.S. federal government, citing security issues. However, Huawei's motto is to serve humanity, not just make money and change people's lives with the help of technology even in the most disadvantaged environments. Let's not forget that Huawei is a company founded in a small apartment in Shenzhen, China in 1987, which managed to connect over 3 billion people in over 170 countries around the world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. See you in the next video.